In my previous video, you saw me change out this uh, 13 dB 50 ohm attenuator for a 16 dB attenuator uh, to uh, better match the uh, input levels to my two amplifiers. And so today I thought I would do a quick project to make use of this 13 dB pad. Uh, the pad, uh, the 16 dB pad, cost me around $20, so that's the approximate value uh, of this device. And what I thought I would do is put it in an enclosure and then uh, be able to utilize it for making uh, measurements. So let's get started. This is the enclosure that I'm uh, proposing to use. Uh, it was a very inexpensive metal enclosure from banggood.com, a Chinese website that sells a lot of electronic uh, components, project boxes, test equipment uh, at really good prices. The only problem is that after you pay for the stuff, you have to wait about three, four weeks before the stuff arrives. But anyway, uh, I don't remember the price of this uh, device. I'll put the uh, SKU, uh, SKU number uh, uh, on the screen, uh, but it was uh, relatively inexpensive. Banggood.com. Uh, you can just search for project boxes and you'll get a lot of uh, choices. Uh, they have metal and uh, plastic uh, project boxes. Uh, of course, for RF, uh, metal is always better. One drawback of this box is that it doesn't split open. A lot of the uh, project boxes will, the main unit will split open uh, and uh, give you easy access, but this one not. So it's going to pre present some mounting challenges uh, as we uh, put the uh, attenuator inside. So first things first, I'm uh, going to mount the uh, attenuator on the bottom of this uh, project box, uh, on the inside of course, but I'm going to set it here on the outside and approximately in the center. And just mark with pencil where the mounting holes will be. And then on the uh, side mounts, I want to uh, mount these uh, SO239 connectors. Um, and so I'm going to find the center as best I can. So there's the for one. Same on the other one. One handy tool to have in your uh, toolbox is a uh, spring punch. Uh, utilized uh, to uh, put a little dimple uh, into metal before you drill on them. So let's try to find that center point. And on the case as well. And I've got some uh, three millimeter uh, metric hardware, the small screws on the bottom. Uh, the big uh, screw on the top uh, is uh, just for uh, sizing. And so that's the size hole that I will drill uh, sufficient to, to uh, mount uh, these. Uh, these are for the uh, uh, attenuator mounting. So we're over to the bench vise. Let's uh, drill some pilot holes. Okay, a couple pilots, and now we'll move on to some larger holes.
Yep, indeed sufficient for the three millimeter size. And finally, I've got this much larger drill bit. <laughs> of course, not going to drill holes. I'm going to use this to countersink the hole just a little bit. That should help the screws to mount flush. Because I'm going to mount the uh, attenuator uh, in uh, the uh, interior of the cabinet uh, at the center, uh, just for symmetry, uh, I have to prep it uh, in order to uh, make some connections for the input, output, uh, and uh, grounding. I have here a piece of uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, braid uh, solder wick used for removing solder uh, from connections. But uh, you can actually take this braid and uh, push in on it and spread it out a little bit. And now I'm going to tin it uh, using a soldering iron uh, to tin the center part. I've, I've made a hole uh, using a little... Uh, solder helper uh, tool uh, and uh, so I'm going to uh, solder around that hole just to give it some rigidity. Next, I'm going to make connections to the input and output of the attenuator to extend them out toward the connectors. And now I'm uh, adding some heat shrink uh, for some structural support. And also to uh, insulate uh, the input and output lines. And I've got some ancient uh, heat uh, sink compound <laughs> that I found in my uh, parts bin. Put a little dab on there to help in the heat transfer.
All right, let's put one of these three millimeter screws through the hole once I get it lined up again. He says. This is going to be a trick. So I've gone and grabbed a, a hemostat, and I'm going to try to place this nut. All right, let's see here. One side is on, and here's where I'd like to put the ground connection through. my problem. Yep, okay, that'll work. Oh, <laughs> I can actually put a lock washer on this if I need to do.
Okay, well, I'll take some pictures to show it a little better close up, but we have uh, the uh, unit mounted inside, um, and uh, we have the uh, input and output lines brought uh, out to where connectors uh, might be able to connect up. So now we're back to the bench vise, and I'm going to drill the pilot holes for the uh, end panels. Trying not to clamp it in there too tight because I don't want to bend it, but on the other hand, I want it to be secure. Pilot hole on one, here's a pilot hole on the other. So now we're on to making the uh, holes for the uh, SO239s, and what I like to use are these uh, step drills. Uh, you, another way you could do it was, would be with a metal punch, uh, but let's uh, see if we can enlarge this. I like to go slow. You get close. I don't trust my eyeball, so I'll actually test fit it. Almost one more. Oh, time for a battery change. So we changed out the battery. And uh, let's continue. We just got one one notch to go here. That was probably it. Yep. Eh, close. Really. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Let's do number two. I marked and punched holes for the uh, mounting of the SO239s. Now it's going to draw holes for those.
So here's the final product of the uh, front and back panels, the input and output um, of the uh, 13 dB attenuator, the SO239 connectors that I've chosen to use. So now we're going to solder the uh, ground connection. And now we'll work on the center conductor. And now we can work on the uh, output side. the ground or shield.
now the center conductor. Here's a view of the uh, output side. So the first test I wanted to make uh, was to put a 50 ohm load on the output and run my rig uh, expert uh, and do a uh, SWR sweep. And you can see by this picture that it uh, seems to be flat, flat, flat. The next thing I wanted to try was to see uh, how it behaves at uh, VHF. And I'm a little disappointed that uh, actually it shows a standing wave ratio of about uh, 2 to 1 or 2.3 to 1. But uh, I actually would expect to use this more at uh, VHF uh, than uh, HF. But it's there, it's working, and it's another tool in the arsenal. Just have to uh, be aware of its limitations. So thanks for coming along, uh, letting me uh, show you uh, the repurposing of a uh, 13 dB attenuator into a piece of uh, test equipment that I may be able to utilize uh, in making some future RF measurements. And hopefully I'll get a chance to show you some of those as we go along as well. Thanks for watching. This is Gary, Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee, saying 73.